Welcome, Irish fans, to this week's edition of the Jack Swarbrick Show. The number one is again lit atop Grace Hall because the Irish men's lacrosse team began the season as the nation's top team in the preseason polls and lived up to that ranking with a season-opening win over 13th-ranked Georgetown in Atlanta this past weekend. The head coach of the men's lacrosse team, Kevin Corrigan, will be our first guest on this week's show. The Notre Dame women's fencing team is heading into the stretch run of another fine season. The Irish are undefeated and ranked second in the country, heading into their defense of their ACC crown this weekend. Senior Nikki McKee will join us with a look at how the team has fared so far this season and give us a preview of this weekend's ACC championships, which will be held right here at Notre Dame. But first, to start our show with their weekly look at all things Irish, here are your hosts, Joe Schmidt and Jack Swarbrick. Thank you, uh, Joe. Great to be with you again. Um, but I gotta, I gotta figure out what's going on here. You're disappearing on me. There's, I, I, there's, there's, people can't see probably because you're sitting down. But there's significantly <laughs> less of you than there was as recently as 60 days ago. So, is this intentional? It's, what's uh, going on? I'm just. I think I needed to stop eating for a little while. Um, the amount that I was consuming in calories and, uh, and just meals per day was starting to weigh on me and also on my pocketbook. So uh, I think I needed to just take some time. Um, I've only lost like I think 10, 10, 10 pounds and I'm 17 down from my heaviest I've ever been. But I feel better and uh, I'm making the improvements. But while we're on this topic, I think we need to point out that someone is making some questionable decisions in their diet. Jack, you're drinking He's, Pib Extra. Yeah, well, it's uh, – it's, um it's a it's an approved product, but I just <laughs> I ran I ran out of iced tea uh, today, and uh, you ran out of iced. tea? Well, I mean, I just went. I consumed my second large iced tea before this show started. I didn't want to make a member of the staff make another run for us, so um, that's that was my fluid of choice. Jack, I, I left the bourbon upstairs, so I just my offer to you. Any time that you need iced tea to prevent you from drinking that and yeah, putting that in your yeah, body, yeah. I will go and get you the iced tea. Yeah. I'll even pay for the my iced wife tea. Will, my wife will pay you <laughs> to, to keep me from drinking Sounds that. Sounds like a so, good job. <laughs> so I, I appreciate it. But so, you know, we, we jest about this, but you guys do a lot to maintain weight. You yeah. put a, eat a lot of calories. I mean, Connor Hanratty starts playing, and he's down like 60 pounds, it seems, overnight. You, you, um, Steve Elmer has already lost a bunch of weight. It, 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 it comes off pretty quickly because you guys work so hard to maintain weight, right? Yeah, and, and it's, it's even it's, – it's, uh, it's amazing because the stuff that we're doing now as a football program, I think that really collegiate athletics is starting to catch on to the importance that diet has on, on your performance and, and how big you need to stay um, and the composition of that, of that mass. So right now, I mean, even our, our football team, you know, they're, they're, they're tracking all of their meals. Um, and I think that that's, it's great that you have to do that, but I mean, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. And I, I guess maybe I'll, I'll give you an idea of, of what I would do um, every day to eat. I would wake up um, each and every morning early. I would have a, I would have a huge breakfast and I would ha- follow that up two hours later with a, with a large protein shake that I would make. Two hours after that, I'd eat, I'd eat lunch. Two hours after that, I'd have another large protein shake. Practice, then I'd have a large dinner, protein shake. Then I would go either a dinner or a protein shake again before bed. And then I would wake up in the middle of the night and I would have yet another protein shake. So as you can see, that's probably the reason for, for why I've lost so much weight. What was the calorie intake like? Do you know? Uh, uh, north of 5,000 calories per day. Wow. Um, I, I was on a, like, I, I basically was a little over a 4,000 calorie just straight food diet. And then I would put in like a few 500 calorie shakes per day. So I, I was like, you know, in the, in the 550, 5,500 to 6,000 calorie range. Um, just because of metabolism and what I needed to do. Yeah, I remember reading about what My- Michael Phelps consumed once, <laughs> and it was like twice that daily, oh, yeah. you know, just because of the amount he worked out. I, I do not have that problem. <laughs> <laughs> Swimmers are a rare breed. I, yeah. I, those guys can eat whatever they want, pancakes and waffles and yeah. pizza for the same meal. So that, They're amazing. Yeah. It's a, uh, it's a big week in my hometown and a big week for a, a large number of your former teammates. The Combine is in Indianapolis. Yeah. It's uh uh, it is a great event for that city, great economic impact. It's uh, the circus comes to town. The Dallas Cowboys bus is park, yeah. was parked outside at St. Elmo's last night, I was told. Um, but it's an important week for some of your former teammates. Uh, tell me a little bit about your perceptions of what they're going through right now. 
You know, it's it's uh, it's obviously it's really it's a stressful, uh, you know, kind of a tense time, um, and it's it's amazing because people might not realize, but the day after the bowl game, guys are at the training sites where they're training. So, you know, if if they're training in in Southern California, if they're training in Dallas or Scottsdale or wherever, um, they all go immediately thereafter, and there's no rest. So, they've kind of just been grinding since really since August um, to try to get to this moment. So, um, you know, I, I saw I saw Ronnie Stanley this, this past weekend and talked with him briefly. I've been talking to Jalen and Sheldon and, and all the other guys through this process, but they've just been training so hard. So I'm, I'm really – I feel good for them in that all of their work is about to pay off and that I know they're all going to do so well um, and they're so well prepared. Um, but yet at the same time, I just I feel, I feel like I want them to just be, be done with it. Uh, but it's a great event. I've never been down there. Have you been down there? Well, yeah, because I spent so many years living and working down there, I was around it a lot, and uh, it's. It, I, I, I've got. We got to find this out, but I'd like to know the volume of business at the St. Elmo Steakhouse in this <laughs> in this week every year. I mean, it's just all NFL teams. Really? Yeah. Every head coach, every owner is in that is in that restaurant at some point during the week. Sometimes more often than once. Do so. they do they do like? activities as as they do around like the the super bowl for this combine you know like no the, the nfl do. it's changed a little bit the nfl did not want it to have much of a public face for many years right. they wanted to just do their business they've now made it a little more public but but not to the degree of 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 other nfl things uh it's, it's more focused on what the nfl network can do with it than than having you know the any sort of um NFL village that people can come do activities in or have any of that stuff. Right. I, just, I thought it was always so fascinating because it's like I was talking to um, Coach Van Gorder about this, and he said, you're not even allowed in the building a lot of the time, and you almost right. see it better from outside the building. There's certain writers that feel like they can write a more compelling story by watching the TV footage now. Yeah, this this, this the scene at this deal is the hotel lobbies. Right. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's where all the action is happening. A, a little bit on the, the combine itself, but the hotel lobbies are, are crazy. And then after this event, of course, we have an important pro day here right. where not only the, 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 the guys who made the combine, but other guys, perhaps Everett Golson I read, maybe right. just being in the pro, pro day will be back. And that's a day where we just showcase people here, right? Yeah, so that's that's a, it's, it's actually a really fun day for our players as well because assuming you don't have class um, in the morning after workouts, you can kind of walk out there. You get to see the, you know the, the 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 all of the surrounding at you know exciting atmosphere uh, that kind of comes along with the day and just watch all your friends and it's great to kind of have everybody come back. Um, so I'm looking forward to everybody coming back into town and to, and to spend some time with them um, you know before you know leading into that pro day. Uh, but th those events are essentially all of the same combine events, uh, but just for Notre Dame uh, student athletes and uh, scouts will come and watch uh, for those that are maybe uninitiated to the pro day process. I'm feeling another remote broadcast coming on for the, I think uh, we for, need this, for this show I was gonna say. If, if we're still if we're still I can't remember the time if we're still doing it then yeah. let's let's get to the other sports before we run out of time in this segment it was a busy weekend um, let's start with women's basketball big game down Florida State um, you, you know they 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 have the number one RPI in the country and reflective of that yet another highly ranked opponent uh, they went down refound their three-point shooting form we're, we're were really effective from from out on the floor and came away with another victory. I mean, it's just it's great to see our, our women just continue to, to continue to win and continue to work. Um, you know, they're just they're just going through methodically through their schedule. They they go in each and every game with with the same determination. Um, and and really, they've closed out their season quite nicely. And and I'm really I'm I'm so happy for them in that you know the winning this game was big in order to hopefully get those those two first uh, those two first buys the double buy going into the the tournament. And I'm kind of looking forward to seeing how they close it up here with with Clemson. I think is this is their next game and and just kind of seeing how they wrapped down the season. Yeah, the the the, the tournament, the uh, conference tournament, uh, f uh, and for them it includes a double buy, uh, and then the national tournament, of course, is just around the corner. Um, had 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 shades of a uh, celebration injury that we had during football. <laughs> Catherine Westville <laughs> went running to help. Uh, help Lindsay off the floor and twisted her ankle. I thought, oh, no, I've seen, I've seen this before. <laughs> I was going to say, don't bring those up, man. Yeah. It's, it's, that's just uh, for me and the celebration injuries, you know, you, you, you see the highlight of that and you, and you, you immediately think, um, at least I immediately think to do the awful 
happenings that I've been uh, <laughs> unfortunately a part of. Um, but I, I'm just so happy that she'll, she'll be okay. Yeah, and, no, and, and we're going to move forward. But yeah. tough, yeah. tough weekend for the boys, though. It was, um, you know, and, and you knew this one and, and, and Wake Forest, what you've got are two teams that have struggled during the year, played everybody really tight, and they're sort of found it, finding themselves in the back end of right. the schedule. And that's when we're hitting them, unfortunately. And Georgia Tech played a good game. We. You know, I thought when we got up six with about three minutes left to go, we were going to be we were going to be in good shape. But Georgia Tech made some shots, especially a really tough three three pointer uh, down the stretch, and uh, we did we weren't able to respond. So still in great shape for the tournament, but that was a tough loss. Yeah, you know, I think it's it, it's just it's just a hard way to lose a, lose a basketball game. And I know you know after the game, you know, coach said that you know maybe the guys were a little gassed, or or maybe you know if you could do it this way, if you could do it that way. I think they played really really hard, and and they're playing great basketball right now. Um, I I don't think there's anybody in the country that wants to play our basketball team. Um, and, and I think that, you know, they, they should have tremendous confidence going into the, these last few games and into their tournament. Yeah, and it's such a crazy year. I mean, I, the, the, I've never seen it more wide open, uh, literally yeah. going into it. Now, it may turn out that, uh, you know, some of the traditional powers will make runs during the tournament. But right now when you look at it and you see, you know, in, in – Somebody's going to win the ACC with four or five losses as the regular season champion, and that's right. uh, that just speaks to what's going on out there. I was going to say, I mean, it's amazing to see North Carolina losing to Duke when you know Duke's unranked and Carolina's supposedly one of the best teams, um, and then you, you got Oklahoma losing some 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 tough games. Um, it's it's almost as if everybody can be beaten right now, and and it's. I mean, it's really it's crazy to me. Yeah, among the notable events uh, over the weekend was a. Uh, a really a, a, a very successful weekend for women's softball overall, but a nice win against a team from your part of the, the world, the eighth-ranked UCLA Bruins. I was going to say, my mom's not thrilled about it, being a Bruin herself, but it's a great great victory for us. The, w the way we're starting the year there, we're really doing really well. I'm yeah. excited. And we'll be able to focus on men's lacrosse here when, when we talk, talk to Coach Corrigan, but women have continued their strong start Uh playing a, uh, a highly ranked BC team and, and really taking it to them. Yeah, and, and we, we talked about this, I know, before the show, but but wow, their athleticism is really – it's really kind of showing itself right now early in the year, and it's great to see, you know, we're beating a team that's a quality opponent in Boston College by 10 goals. Uh, we beat Stanford, who's great. Um, so it's it's really encouraging to see the 3-0 and start and just to see where they can take this. I mean, obviously, they got a great team this year. It's going to be an exciting spring at, uh, at Notre Dame Athletics. Joe, let's take a break, and uh, we'll come back with our guest. Sounds good. See you in a minute.